I see August Wilson's characters every day. When I walk out the door. When I get on the bus or train. When I pick up food for takeout. On the news. When I see my family. In big and little ways, his words give us life. He wrote these pieces for us. For us. For us. His plays capture so many African American experiences. Wilson wrote about the humanity of a people seen as animals all around the world. They have families at home and hobbies. Wilson showed the world that these people that were so different were still humans, <laughs> just like everybody else. He advocated for the black experience, but spoke for all. You ain't taking that piano out of my house. Look at this piano. Look at it. Mama will polish this piano with her tears for 17 years. For 17 years, she rubbed on it until her hands bled. Then she rubbed the blood in it, mixed it up with the rest of the blood on it. Every day that God breathed life into her, she rubbed and polished and prayed over it. Play something for me, Bernice. Play something for me, Bernice. Every day. I got it all cleaned up for you. Play something for me, Bernice. You're always talking about how much you like your daddy, but you would never stop to think about what's the trouble cost your mama. 17 years worth of cold nights in an empty bed for what? For a piano? For a piece of wood? <laughs> to get even with somebody? I look at you and you are all the same. You, Papa Boy Charles, Whining Boy, Doker, Crawley, you are all alike. All this thieving and killing and thieving and killing and what did it ever lead to? More killing and more thieving. I've never seen anything like it. People getting burnt up. People getting shot. People falling down their wells. And don't never stop. Hitley made 10 chicken sandwiches today. <laughs> All right, got 10 chicken sandwiches. All right. Ain't no gray, you go not my body down. Ain't no gray, you go not my body down. Ain't no gray, you go not my body down. You think a black man a dog in the dust you can kick when you won't? I'm not a dog. You think you can throw a bone and I'll run after it? You think I'll fetch for you? You think I'll wag my tail for you? The black man is not a dog. He's a lion of Judah. He's the mud God make his image from. You think I shall judge for the wind? The black man not a dog. I'm hurricane to you. When you see me, the roof fall. See, I stir up the dust around me. Like the eagle stir up this nest. Let you know I talk this. <laughs> Ain't no great gonna hold my body down. Black man, not dog. See, I'm a hurricane to you. When you see me, the roof fall over your heads. In the roof and it shutters and all the windows are broken. You're black man, not a dog. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What you say? Wait. You say. What? You say, what? What you say? The black man, not a dog. Would you think I wag my tail for you? You think I fetch for you? The black man is not a dog. 
I'm a man, woman. I'm the man to father your children. I offers you a kingdom. What you say? <laughs> Wait, I got you. You say, as a blind man. You say, I cast my pearls before swan. I'm not a blind man. When I'm in a duck, my knees buckle from war. offer you a kingdom. The flesh of my flesh, my seven generations. I offer you a kingdom. I offer you to be lily of the valley. To be queen of sheep. To be queen of the black man's kingdom. And you laugh at me. You laugh at Joe. Louis father? What you say? You didn't play? I'm, I'm the lion of Judah! Satan! I would tear your kingdom down! Satan! I would tear your kingdom down! Satan! I would tear your kingdom down! It was nothing to you, but it was something to me. To have you just up and walk out like that. What do you think happened to me? Did you ever stop to ask yourself? I wonder how Vera doing? I wonder how she feel? I lay here every night in an empty bed, in an empty room. Where? Someplace special? The same place you had been? The same room you walked out of? The same bed you turned your back on? You give it up and you want it. What kind of sense does that make? You had what you want and I didn't. That makes you special. You one of them special people who's supposed to have everything just the way they want it. Floyd, I wanted to know where you was bruised at so I could be a woman for you. So I could touch you there. So I could spread myself all over you and know that I was a woman. That I could give a man only those things a woman has to give. How much woman you think it make you feel to know you can't satisfy a man. So he could say, yes, they're a woman. That's what you say, but you never believed it. You never showed me all those places where you were a man. You went to Pearl Brown. And you showed her. I don't know what she did or didn't do. But when I looked up, it was right back here after I had given you up. After I had walked through an empty house for a year and a half looking for you. After I would lay myself out on that bed and search my body for your fingerprints. <laughs> you touched me here. And Floyd touched me here, and he kissed me here, and he gave me here, and he took here, and he ain't here, he ain't here, he ain't here. Quit looking for him, cause he ain't here. He's there, there, there. He's there. In Chicago, with another woman, and all I have is a little bit of nothing, a little bit of touching. A little bit of myself left. What are you looking for? What you remember? It ain't even here no more. Caesar, I gave you everything! Even what I didn't have to give you! I made every way for you, I turned my eyes away!
Because I figured if I couldn't see it, I couldn't know fault. If I held fault, I couldn't hold on to my love for you. But now you're standing in the light, and I can't turn away no more. I remember you and you was on the other side of the law. That's my brother. The one selling hoe cakes off the back of a wagon. The one who helped Mrs. Robinson and the kids when no one else would. That's my brother. The one who woke up early in the, every morning to take me to school. The one who believed that everyone had the same right to life. The same right to whatever there was in life they could find useful. That's my brother. I don't know who you are, but you not my brother. You hear me, Caesar. You not my brother. His words have shifted my perspective. He educated me on African-American struggles that I was blind to. I see the strength of his characters in the world today. I see people who are strong and independent fighting for what they believe in. His characters allowed me to feel confident, strong, and most importantly, heard. August Wilson shifted my perspective in many ways. But most importantly, instead of just talking, we need to listen. Often when he was getting inspiration, he would go to cafes and just listen to life and listen to people's stories without them knowing it. This really changed me. It taught me that I don't always have to put my input. Sometimes what matters most is that we listen to people rather than speak over them. His work is an extremely impactful force on today's culture and society. I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I got a life too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot with you. Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Don't you think it ever crossed my mind to want to know other men? That I wanted to lay up somewhere and forget about my responsibilities? That I wanted someone to make me laugh so that I could feel good. You're not the only one who got wants and needs. But I held on to you, Troy. I took all my feelings, my wants and needs, my dreams, and I buried them inside you. I planted a seed and watched and prayed over it. I planted myself inside you and waited to bloom. It didn't take me no 18 years to find out the soil was hard and rocky and wasn't never gonna bloom. But I held on to you, Troy. I held you tighter. You was my husband. I owed you everything I had. Every part of me I could find to give to you. And upstairs in that room with the darkness falling in on me, I gave everything I had to try to erase the doubt that you weren't the finest man in the world. And wherever you was going, I wanted to be there with you. Because you was my husband. Because that was the only way I was going to survive as your wife. You always talking about what you give and what you don't have to give. But you take too. You take and don't even know. Nobody's giving. <laughs> mm. Here, Mrs. Citizen. Here. You got a woman in your hands. Now what? What you got? What you gonna do? Time ain't long, Mrs. Citizen. A woman ain't 
but so many times filled up. What you gonna do? What you gonna fill me up with? <laughs> Love, happiness, peace. What you got, Mr. Citizen? I seen it all. You got something new? Come on. What can I be without you? <laughs> Leroy and John and Cujo and Sam and Robert. One after the other, they come and they go. You can't hold on to none of them. They use you up and you can't hold them. They all this time taking till it's gone. They ain't got nothing to add to it. They ain't got nothing in their hands. They too busy taking cause they need. And you can't blame them for that. But you, you don't even know what you need. Cause all you see is a woman. All you think is a woman. Mm -mm. That blinds you. Okay, Mr. Citizen. I'll come to your room tonight. But the morning gotta come. You wake up tomorrow, Mr. Citizen, and look at your hand. And tell me what you got. Make him come back to me. Make his feet say my name on the road. I don't care what happens. Make him come back. He go by Jack Harper. He was born in Alabama. Then he come to West Texas and find me and we come here. Been here three years before he left. Say I had a curse prayer on me and he started walking down the road and ain't never come back. Somebody told me, say, you can fix things like that? And he said nothing, just started walking. I could see where he disappeared. Didn't look back, just keep walking. Can't you fix it so he come back? I ain't got no curse prayer on me, I know I ain't. Me and Jack had two babies, two little babies that ain't lived two months before they died. He say it's because somebody cursed me not to have babies. All my life, I've been looking for somebody to stop and stay with me. I done already got too many things to forget about. I take Jack Harper's hand, and it feels so rough and strong. Seem like he's the strongest man in the world the way he hold me. Like he's bigger than the whole world and can't nothing bad get to me. Even when he act mean sometimes, he still make everything seem okay with the world. Like there's part of it that belongs just to you. And now you're telling me to forget about him? Mr. Urban told me you boys prefer cash. That's what I have for you. That was a good session you boys put in. It's 25 for you. Yes, sir. You boys really know your business and we are going to... That's 25 for you. We're going to get back. We're going to get you back in here real soon. 25 and have another session so you boys can make some more money and that's 25 for you okay thank you boys you can get your things together and mr Herbal will make sure you find your way out oh yes uh levy about them songs you gave me i thought about it and i just don't think the people will buy them They're not the type of songs we're looking for I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you five dollars a piece for them. That's the best I can do. There's nothing more I can do about that. Like I say, it's five dollars a piece. That's what I'll give you. I'm doing you a favor. Now, if you write any more, I'll help you and take them off your hands. The price is five dollars a piece. Just like now. 
August Wilson's brave words have paved a way for empowerment for people of color. Writing stories for people that didn't have a voice back then. It wasn't nothing to you, but it was something to me. To how you just up and walk out like that, what you think happened to me? Did you ever stop to ask yourself? I wonder how they were doing. I wonder how she feel. I lay here every night in the empty bed, in the empty room. Where? Someplace special? The same place you had been? The same room you walked out of? The same bed you turned your back on? You give it up and you want it? What kind of sense does that make? You had what you wanted, and I didn't. That makes you special. You one of them special people who's supposed to have everything just the way they want it. Floyd, I wanted to know where you was bruised at so I could be a woman for you, so I could touch you there, so I could spread myself all over you and know that I was a woman. That I could give a man all those things a woman has to give. And he could be satisfied. How much of a woman you think it make you feel to know you can't satisfy a man? So he could say, yes, they're a woman. That's what you say, but you never believed it. You never showed me all the places where you was a man. You went to Pearl Brown and you showed her. And I don't know what she did or didn't do, but I looked up and you was back here after I had given you up. After I had walked through an empty house for a year and a half looking for you. After I would lay myself out on that bed and search my body for your fingerprints. Boy, touch me here. And he touched me here, and he, he touched me here, and he kissed me here, and he, he took me here, and he gave me here, and he ain't here. He ain't here, he ain't here, he ain't here. Quit looking for him, because he ain't here. He's there. There, 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 he's there. In Chicago. With another woman. And all I have left is a little bit of nothing. A little bit of touching and a little bit of myself left. <laughs> it ain't even here no more. What you looking for? What you remember? It ain't even here no more. My fifth grade teacher told me I was gonna make a good janitor. Say she could tell by how good I rest the blackboards. How do you believe in it? Come home and told Mama Louise I wanted to be a janitor. She said I could be anything I wanted, so I said, okay, I'll be a janitor. Thought that's what I was supposed to be. I didn't know no better. That was the first time I got clean my bar that used to be down at Wiley. Got me another job. And the man said he was going to shoot me if he caught me stealing anything. I ain't with them for 10 minutes. Quit right there. Call me a thief before I start. Nasty say I shouldn't have quit. But I'm a man. I don't bother nobody. I know what's right for me. That's where me and the rest of the people part ways. Tanya come up to me and ask, when are we gonna move? She want a decent house. One with a plaster and falling off the walls. I told her okay, but we gotta wait. Oh, what I'm waiting on, I don't know. I'm just waiting. Told myself I'm waiting for things to change. <laughs> that means I'm gonna be living here forever. Trying to deserve better than that. Go for a job, and they ask me, what can you do? And I told them, I can do anything. If you give me the planes and the tanks, I can go out there and win any war that's out there. Can dance all night if the music's right and nothing I can't do. 
I could build a railroad if you gave me the steel and the gang of men to drive the spikes. Only it did to nothing. I could go out there and do Melon's job. I know how to do business. I don't know money to everybody who asks. I'm talking about mayor, governor, can do it all. But I know which way the wind blow. Don't blow my way. <laughs> no, Darnell. You ain't bought no house without me. How many times in your life do you get to pick out a house? You bought a deal for Darnell. That's what you did. So you can sit down there and watch your football games. But what about the kitchen? The bathroom? How many windows does it have in the bedroom? Is there some place for just to play? How much closet space does it have? You can't just surprise me with a house and I'm supposed to say, oh Darnell, that's nice. At one time I would have, but I'm not 17 anymore. I have responsibilities. I want to know if it has a hookup for a washer and a dryer because I have to wash just clothes. I want to know if it has a yard and do we have a fence and how far Jess has to go to school. I ain't thinking about where to put the TV. That's not what's important to me. And you're supposed to know Darnell. You're supposed to know what's important to me. Like I'm supposed to know what's important to you. I'm not asking you to do it on your own. I'm here with you. We're in this together. See, house or no house, we still ain't got the full money. But if you would've came to me, if you would've came and told me that, could've had one to my mother's house, could've got eight dollars for the food, and we could've, we could've still had food money. <laughs> you just did it all wrong right now. I mean, you did the right thing, but you did it wrong. You take little Buddy Will's mother up on Brimma Road. What she got? A heartache. They don't never go away. She up there now sitting down in her living room. She got to sit down because she can't stand up. She's sitting down trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out what happened. One minute her house is full of life. The next minute it's full of death. She was waiting for him to come home and they bring her a corpse. Say, come down and make the identification. Is this your son? Got a tag on his toe, say John Doe. They got to put a number on it. John Doe number four. She got dinner on the table. Say, do you like fried chicken? She got some of that. Say, do you like stream beans? She got some of that. She don't know Junior ain't eating no more. She look in the closet. Junior ain't got no suit. She got to go buy him a suit. He can't try it on. She got to guess the size. Somebody come up and tell her Miss So-and-So. Your boy got shot. She know before they say it. Her knees start to get weak. She shaking her head. She don't want to hear it. Somebody call the police. They come pick him up off the sidewalk. Dead nigga on Brimma Road. <laughs> they got a group playing cards and come pick him up. <laughs> they used to take pictures. They don't even take pictures no more. <laughs> they pull him out the freezer and she look at him. She don't want to look. They make her look. <laughs> what to do now? The only thing to do is call the undertaker. The line busy. She got to call back five times. The undertaker got so much business. He don't know what to do. He loses sleep. He got to hire two more helpers to go with the two he already got. <laughs> he don't even look at the bodies no more. He couldn't tell you what they look like. He could only remember the problems he had with them. This one, so big and fat, if you fall off the table, it takes six men to pick him up. That one ain't got no cheek. That one's eyes won't stay closed. The other been dead so long, he got maggots coming out his nose. The family can't pay for that one. The coroner won't see the other one again. That one's mother won't go home the other one. 
I ain't going through that. I ain't having this baby and I ain't gotta explain it to nobody. Living on through his timeless body of work, the many truths in his century cycle still ring true today. Thank you so much, August Wilson, for writing my experience. Thank you. 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 Thank you.